What is going on guys? So today we are going to go over some more secret off meta sets in ESO that you should know about. These aren't your typical meta cookie cutter sets. These require a bit more knowledge and theory crafting to find their specific use and they have a lot of potential with the right setup and build. You have to find ways to synergize and complement that specific playstyle. You guys seem to have enjoyed the last iteration of this type of video. So I'm bringing you back with more off the wall sets you probably have never even thought of using. But before we get started, if you are newer to PVP, I created the ESO Academy Discord server. It is designed as a resource to either help you start or improve at PVP in ESO. We have several hundreds of members and are growing by the day. We would love to have you join. It doesn't matter your experience or skill level, we are here to help. If you guys are interested, I'll leave a link down in the description below. And one big last announcement, the realgodzilla.com website is officially live. Now it still needs more updating on the build section and more expanding on some beginner guides, but the basic skeletal form is there. I really, really hope you guys find this website very helpful and any suggestions on changing it or adapting it to your viewing experience is much appreciated. If you guys wanna comment on this video or tell me in Discord, it doesn't matter. Any feedback is very valuable. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. So for the first set, we have Flame Blossom. This gives you a two piece of Maxwell Magic a three piece of weapon and spell damage, a four piece of offensive penetration, and the five piece, when you deal damage, you summon a line of flame that moves forward after one second, dealing 1,537 flame damage to any enemy in its path and applying the burning status effect. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. Now, after looking at this set on the PTS, this set has a very long range. It looks like it goes upwards of 20 to maybe 25 meters. The unique aspect of this set has similarities to something like Calrian's, but it, it is a small AOE line of flame rather than a single target attack. I think utilizing this set where you have access to a decent stun like Fossilize or Reverb can have some nasty burst potential paired with skills like Defissure, Curse, or even other proc sets. Since this set does have a one second delay, the proc set rule does not apply to this set and can be paired with other proc sets like Vatish Run 2H, Selene's, and others. It has an awesome two, three, and four piece bonuses, but it's going to be a little bit more magic focused than stamina. However, since this procs off of any damage you deal, it doesn't have to be a critical attack or whatever the case is, you can really time this up with some massive burst on classes like the Stam Nightblade, Stam DK, and even Stamden, as all these classes could benefit from the max magic line and all have a combo that they can use with this set. Wardens can use this set to time up with Deep Fissure and Dawn Breaker and then go into a Whirling Blade to do a massive amount of damage. This set is similar to scaling to Calrians, but it's just a little bit less for the most part, you're going to have like a 10 to 11, maybe even 12k tooltip with just a regular build. Uh, for Stam DK, obviously fossilized, they could just really snare people and hold them into it. So you can kind of guarantee the proc with Molten Whip and whatnot. Uh, it can really line up for some nasty bursts. And the Stam Blade, I think, is probably one of the easiest to set this up with because you can go into a cloak, drop an end cap on somebody's forehead. That set comes out and delays, similar to Calrians. So you could, heck, you could even run both of them with Calrians. And I think it would be some nasty burst potential. Have maybe three attacks that hit in one swift, like one or two second window can allow for some massive burst potential. For the next set, we have Eternal Warrior. So this gives you a two piece of healing taken. The three piece is really unusable in PVP, but this does reduce your damage taken from dungeon and trial and area monsters by 5%. Uh, the four piece gives you maximum health and the five piece adds healing taken. And whenever you take damage while under 25% health in combat, you heal for 9,370 health and gain 100 ultimate. This effect can occur once every one minute and the heal scales off of your maximum health. Now don't let this set fool you. Just because it's a trial set, it does not mean it's not good for PvP. This set may not be the best offensive set like Trial by Fire or Data Trickery, but this set has some loaded bonuses that you may not see on the surface. The two and the five piece both have added healing taken. Healing taken, for anyone who doesn't know, is actually just a little bit better than healing done, or what is also called major and minor mending. From a solo 1vx type of build, you could care less how much you're healing other people for. Now, I understand that major mending also increases your healing, but if you get healed by somebody else, but well, that's gonna get increased by 8% if you have the five piece bonus active. There's also no diminishing returns for stacking healing received, while mending does have diminishing returns. But that is just a small part. The bigger picture is the load of 100 ultimate when you get under 25% health, and the added healing that you get when you get that low, which the heal in PvP is probably around eight to 12,000 because it's based off your maximum health. So if you have like 30K health, it'll probably be, be about that range. So you could go from, let's say 25% health to 60% health is kind of a ballpark number, but the ultimate provided can save your life 10 times over. 
Not many sets give you this amount of ultimate in such short of a window. This could give you enough ultimate to either Dragon Leap, you know, use like Sword and Board ultimate, Papa Resto, whatever you need. I think obviously this set is going to be best used on the Dragonite, but it doesn't have to be limited to that. I think Warden could be great as well. Even Necromancer has a lot of potential uh, on this set. I remember several patches ago, my buddy Nice used this set on a Dragonite where he could get low health, use a corrosive armor, and then he would get enough ultimate to use a take flight in his corrosive armor, allowing for all of his attacks, including his ultimate, take flight, to deal damage and have a, over 100% penetration on the target. There is just so many levels to this set and it has so many potential uses. For the next set, we have Plague Slinger. So this gives you a two piece of weapon and spell damage, a three piece of maximum health, a four piece of weapon and spell damage, and the five piece, when you take damage, you summon a Skeever Corpse, which will launch five poison balls over five seconds that deal poison damage to the nearest enemy within 10 meters. This effect can occur once every eight seconds and scales up the higher of your weapon or spell damage. Now, Plague Slinger is actually one of the most unique item sets in the game. Now, the AOE range on this set is not perfect, but it provides you with quite a bit of damage if the enemy remains close enough. Now, the reason why this set is even in this video is because it is one of the best defensive back bar proc sets in the entire game. So it allows you to do a little bit of poke damage that shoots out those poison balls at people while you're playing a little bit defensive. And since it scales off of your weapon spell damage, if you are a 1vx build, that'll be relatively high. And this set will perform best in close range areas like in Towers and Cyrodiil, where you have several different people wailing on you. Now, one of the downsides of this set is it is single target. I think if they adjusted this set to make it more AOE range, like four meters uh, exploding ball of poison, it would make it a little bit better. But nonetheless, it has a very short cooldown at only three seconds because it has a five second uptime and has eight second downtime, so that's how we got to three seconds. Making this set consistent and have decent pressure from a proc set. So for the next set, we have Griffin's Reprisal. This gives you critical chance, offensive penetration, and critical chance. So the five piece, when you deal critical damage, you or an ally can activate the Griffin's Reprisal on the enemy within the next eight seconds, causing a small Griffin to fly by and deal bleed damage over 10 seconds to enemies within five meters. This effect can occur once every 20 seconds and scales off the higher of the synergies activators weapon or spell damage. So the Griffin's Reprisal set has a lot of potential on any type of harmony focus build. And obviously the best harmony setup will be on a Necromancer utilizing the Avid Boneyard, which is already good in itself, but adding this extra bleed proc set on a class that has the Rabarot passive could be deadly for any type of small encounter from dot pressure and AOE burst. But the crazy part about this is you don't have to use harmony for this set to have some crazy scaling. On a completely unoptimized setup, I had a over 26k tooltip over 10 seconds which is a quite a decent dot. And obviously if you pair this with other dots like Blood Craze, Mails from 2H with Stampede, Car from the 2H, this could give tons of pressure on a target. Now this set is AOE based as well, adding for more AOE pressure on a dot focused type of build. Just sitting here theory crafting about this makes you wanna go and try this on a Necromancer right now. But overall, I think this could be a cool niche way to play Necro and actually take some advantage of his class passives at least a little bit. And for the last set, we have Azure Blight Reaper. This gives you a two piece of critical chance, a three piece of maximum stamina, a four piece of stamina recovery. And the five piece, when you deal damage with a damage over time effects, you apply a stack of blight seed to your target for five seconds. At 20 stacks, the blight seed explodes, dealing disease damage to the target and two nearby enemies, scaling off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. An enemy can only have one instance of blight seed at a time, an enemy that has reached 20 sacks cannot be infected with the Blight Seed for two seconds. So Azure Blight was and still is one of the best battleground sets in the game. Using a heavy dot focus build, Azure Blight has some crazy bursts and is a ticking time bomb. This was the original Plague Break set before we even had Plague Break. As the more dots you have ticking, especially the ones with AOE focus, the more Azure Blight explosions you can get because you can proc this on multiple people at once. This can be used on any class. You could run Azure Blight with the VMA2H with Stampede, Master's Duel with Blood Craze, use Cal Chops and Double Dot Poisons to give you even more dot pressure. And I haven't even talked about a single class skill yet, and you could probably get to 20 sacks in three or four seconds with this setup. The only downside to this set is you have to keep the pressure up. Once you start to have to play a little bit defensive, this is when this set starts to lose a little bit of its value. 
But in Battlegrounds, where everybody is grouped up, it can absolutely nuke a group of people. Oh, and if you want to, you can just run this with Plague Rake on the front bar for even more explosions. Overall, Azure Blight is a solid set for any kind of group where you can rely on other people for off heals, where you can go absolute nuke mode in PvP. But that is it for this video, guys. I will be coming out with several other videos going over some monster sets and obviously more armor sets that are a little bit off meta that I think need a little bit more love. That's it for me. I hope you have a good rest of your day. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.